have you heard the rumors? Everyone seems to be talking about this for a while now. Yoga is bad. Mm -hmm. I know young white women, even older white women, white women of a certain age, they love yoga. But no bueno. Mm -mm, no. Could yoga actually be dangerous and demonic? Even some seasoned yogi gurus say it's not as safe as it seems. Today, we're diving deep into this mystery and exploring the type of yoga that's rumored to be the most dangerous of them all, kundalini yoga. No matter what background or faith you identify with, you do not want to miss this. Welcome to Alicia Bradley Ministries. Here we talk about how your daily activities, habits, even current events and trends connect with the Bible and how they impact your mental health. Our mission here is to supernaturally eliminate mental illness through the power of Christ. I am so happy you're here. To learn more, visit aliciabradleyministries.com. So before we dive into Kundalini Yoga, let's talk about yoga as a general practice. You might have noticed something. Why is yoga so tough to do? Like every pose is so hard to accomplish. Ever wonder why? Well, yoga literally means to yoke or to be attached. And in this case, the yoke is not so light, but it's been westernized to appeal to mass amounts of people in the Western world. This is something that most people don't know about. They don't understand the actual roots of yoga. Each yoga pose is specifically designed to worship, embody, and give honor to different gods, goddesses, and deities in the Hindu religion. These poses were also designed to evoke the character and the essence of these deities. And most of these deities are not very friendly and not very nice. You've probably already heard claims that yoga is demonic, right? But what if I told you there's something even more concerning that most people do not talk about? Let's talk about Kundalini Yoga, the practice that involves movements and breath work to ignite this serpent-like energy at the base of the spine. This energy is said to move upward and expand through the chakras, which are different energy centers in the body. And this energy expands all the way to the top crown chakra. Kundalini Yoga draws from ancient Vedic and Tantric traditions, where this energy, often called Kundalini, is believed to lie dormant within everybody. The idea is to awaken this energy and let it rise through the chakras to achieve ultimate enlightenment. Listen to that again. You may not have fully caught what I said. The point of Kundalini Yoga is to ignite this inner serpent spirit to make it uncoil, to expand and grow from the spine all the way to the top of the brain. And what's really happening when this serpent energy uncoils within the body? What's really going on when we're literally conjuring a serpent spirit to rise up in the body and impact our mind? The place that's supposed to hold wisdom one of the main ways that we can get easily deceived is through the mind. The mind is the place that dictates our entire mental health. This serpent spirit is said to move through each chakra and the end goal is profound spiritual awakening, often described as enlightenment. But here's the catch. Some believe that this awakening might actually open you up to demonic forces that are not understood or easily controllable. Kundalini Yoga, it is the most potent and it is the most dangerous. In two days of practice, because it will change everything about you. So can we raise the Kundalini? Yes, we can. One way is to create a conducive atmosphere so that slowly it rises. The other way is to provoke it in such a way that it raises quickly. <laughs> if it raises quickly, then everything changes dramatically. If it rises slowly over a period of time, changes will happen slowly. You will be capable of handling these changes over a period of time. But if it happens very quick, then you will not be able to handle the changes. Things will look like things are falling apart. 
So there are different ways of doing this, how many ways, there are too many ways, I will not go into how many ways, there are so many ways of doing it. Essentially, there are one hundred and twelve ways of doing it. Could it be that what's described as spiritual enlightenment is actually spiritual euphoric delusion? A full-blown deception of the mind. Probably one of the highest level and most dangerous types of deception someone can be in. Listen to this, it's going to uncover some unbelievable information about this yoga practice. To give you a more thorough picture on the deception that kundalini yoga was emerged from originally, let's dive into the man behind the curtain, the man that started the movement of kundalini in the Western world. I'd like to introduce to you Yogi Bhajan. Born in 1929 in what is now Pakistan, Yogi Bhajan was raised in a Sikh family and later became a student of both yoga and Sikhism. In short, Sikhism is one of the most recently founded major Indian religions, and it focuses heavily on meditation in order to seek and draw near to God. Yogi Bhajan moved to the U.S. in 1968, where he began teaching Kundalini Yoga, presenting it as a path to spiritual and personal empowerment. Yogi Bhajan is credited with bringing Kundalini Yoga to the West and making it accessible to a very broad audience. But here's what most people don't mention. His colleagues back at home, they were not at all happy about Yogi Bhajan's decision to bring Kundalini to the West because it was a sacred religious practice for them that he was ultimately monetizing off of by introducing it to Americans, watering it down for people who were searching desperately for spiritual depth and who were willing to pay any price to find it. Yogi Bhajan was also a serial entrepreneur. He was where the money opportunities were. He founded the Healthy Happy Holy Organization, or 3HO for short, in 1969, which became the central hub for his teachings. Through 3HO, he promoted not just Kundalini Yoga, but also a holistic lifestyle that included dietary guidelines, spiritual philosophy, and even the establishment of Sikh Dharma International as a recognized religious organization in the U.S. That all sounds pretty legit, right? Well, buckle up because it's about to take a dark turn. In recent years, serious allegations have surfaced about him. In 2020, a former close associate published a book titled Premka, White Bird in a Golden Cage, My Life with Yogi Bhajan. In it, she alleges that Yogi Bhajan sexually abused her and other women within his community. This revelation opened the floodgates, leading to more allegations of sexual misconduct, abuse of power, and financial exploitation. An independent investigation was commissioned, and the report concluded that it was more likely than not that Yogi Bhajan engaged in a pattern of sexual and emotional abuse. This has caused many to reevaluate his teachings and influence. But the crazy part is, many people don't even know about this. He even had a theory that sexual abuse wasn't a thing. He believed that victims of SA were not victims at all that it was a result of the energy they were emitting out into the universe and they were inviting it in onto themselves. Basically, that it was their fault. This is textbook victim blaming. And Yogi Bhajan did that to every single one of his victims. This explains why he freely essayed women without feeling remorse because he didn't think that essay was even a thing. This is one of the many delusions that framed his spiritual philosophies and practices, showing how his teachings were grounded in lies and demonic distortions. Oh, it gets even grimier. Listen to this. Beyond his spiritual teachings, Yogi Bhajan continued to be a super successful entrepreneur. He was behind several business ventures, including Yogi Tea. Yeah. Yeah, the tea that's literally in every grocery store. I even had a lot of yogi tea in my house until I learned about Yogi Bhajan. You might have some too. Once I learned this about him, I respectfully had to put it in the trash. 
He also owned Golden Temple Foods and a call security, a company that grew into one of the largest security firms in the United States. His businesses were not just profitable, they were part of a larger network under the Khalsa International Industries and Trade Organization, overseeing a range of enterprises from natural foods all the way to real estate. Yogi Bhajan's businesses were worth over a billion dollars. So what do we make of all of this? On one hand, Yogi Bhajan is credited with spreading kundalini yoga and Sikh dharma to a global audience, creating a community that continues to thrive to this day. On the other hand, the serious allegations against him have caused a significant controversy and challenged people, and only the people that know about it, to reconsider the spiritual and ethical foundations of kundalini yoga. The crazy part is most people don't connect kundalini with this man at all, so they have no idea what's going on. And at the base of it all, he's simply a man who spread a promise to people that if they ignite their inner serpent spirit, they will find freedom and enlightenment in life. But the question is, what type of freedom was he referring to? Was he referring to the freedom to lust and predatorily abuse women while not ever empathizing with their pain or taking accountability for what he did? Or maybe he was referring to the freedom to water down an ancient religious practice in order to monetize and exploit it for his own financial gain. Oh, there's even more. I'm not done yet. Listen to this. The major students under Yogi Bhajan either accused him of essaying them or they followed directly in his footsteps and put a blind eye to his essay accusations. And one of his most popular students died at the very young age of 40 due to congestive heart failure. She was one of the students that put a blind eye to his shenanigans and she actually engaged in a lot of financial exploitation of her staff, allegedly. And it's very difficult not to connect the cause of her death to what happens to really anyone when a serpent spirit is conjured within a body and coils itself around one's insides, constricting its victim and potentially creating failure of organ functioning and a slew of other internal issues. It's hard not to make that connection to her congestive heart failure, is it not? When we evoke demons of any kind, and I hope you've learned in this video that all yoga, not just kundalini, is specifically designed to conjure, worship, and embody false gods, which is ultimately conjuring, embodying, and worshiping demons. And if we know that a demon's sole mission is to kill, steal, and destroy, then everyone who is practicing yoga is conjuring spirits within their own body that are now on mission to kill, steal, and destroy their physical health, their mental health, and their overall life. The state that Yogi Bhajan was in, including the students that followed in his footsteps, were all oppressed by demonic delusions and likely even possession by the serpent-like spirit that they were all working so very hard to conjure. There's no coincidence that in the Christian deliverance ministry world, many people who are plagued with demonic oppression are dealing with a similar serpent-like spirit that tends to coil around their spine. If you ever watch deliverance ministry, you will hear the deliverance ministers telling those demons to uncoil from their victim's spine and their brain and to cast them out in Jesus' name. You're gonna let her loose, let her loose, loose! Looser, 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 right? Paige, Paige, come back up. Demon, let her go, let her go. Uh, Paige, come back up. Out, spirit of heaven. <coughs> out, 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 looser, looser, looser in the mighty name of Jesus. All spirits are going to be out, out, out. It feels a lot loose, free. Yes. A lot freer. Huh? Yes. Do you see these connections? As we wrap up today's discussion, I want to leave you with this thought. Not all spiritual experiences are good ones, obviously. Just because something feels euphoric and powerful and profound and enlightening doesn't mean it's sent from God. It's crucial to discern the source of these experiences 
Test the spirits, even if they feel like light spirits, still test them to protect yourself from spiritual deception and ultimate delusion. If you've been practicing Kundalini yoga or any other form of yoga, or if you feel drawn to it, I'm asking you to consider the spiritual implications that come with it. If you're Christian, it's time to take a full step back, seek spiritual protection, repent for engaging in yoga, and focus on practices that align with biblical values, like simple stretching or Pilates. Let's remember what the Bible says about this matter. In Exodus 22 to 6, in the New King James Version, it says this, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. It is very clear biblically that the practice of yoga goes against this commandment to not worship any false gods. And if you've been watching this video and you're not saved yet and you're interested in doing so, be sure to watch this video that I linked above. You can get saved in 15 minutes by saying that prayer with me. This is a step to guaranteeing high level spiritual protection because now you are made a new creation in the Holy Spirit and you have the protection of Jesus Christ covering you. Other ways you can protect yourself spiritually is to continually read the Bible, pray, and do all you can to seek God, understand his word, and understand how he works. Thank you for joining me today. Remember, the mission of this ministry is to supernaturally eliminate mental illness altogether through the power of biblical knowledge and Christ. Let's stay vigilant, let's stay prayerful, and let's stay informed. Until next time, be blessed. And remember, Jesus loves you and he's always seeking you. And he's here to protect you if you allow him in. How did I gain over 500,000 subscribers on YouTube in less than six months? Well, I definitely did not do it alone. I followed individuals who were clearly anointed and called to spread the gospel online. One individual in particular, Evangelist Taylor Michael. I was immediately drawn to him and I saw that he carried a grace that most people have not carried when it comes to the online space and the gospel. And even though I was not certified, ordained, or anything when it comes to leadership in church or even as an evangelist, I knew one thing and I knew that I loved Jesus so much and I was called to speak about him online and to gather souls to be saved. I felt an urgency in my spirit to do this. And I knew I didn't want to connect with just anyone. I wanted to connect with the people that were leading a movement online and taking over the algorithm altogether. There's over 700 students in his Kingdom University. His group of coaches were amazing and I was just promoted to an actual coach in the program as well. And this movement, spreading the good news online, is called the Viral Revival. And we have seen nothing like it in the history of mankind. If you want to be a part of this, if you want to share your love for Jesus, and gather souls to enter into the kingdom of heaven, then be sure you join this movement. You will not regret it.